Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 13 of this Let's Play of Remnants of the Precursors. This is a tutorial series, and we're, we've got through most of the, tut the tutorial content now, I'd say. Um, <clears throat> we've looked at most of the screens. There's still some elements of the fleet screen that we could do with looking at. And now we've got some more ships and some more fleet types. It's probably a good time to do that. But let's see if that can come along organically as we play the game. Um, as usual, it's been a few days actually since I've, uh, I've played this one, so I just want to have a quick look to see where we're at in this game. Here's a, co a, a screen that we've not looked at before. This is the, the, the military view. And it's the military view of your colonies, and it tells you um, all the production that you can, you can output. You can sort things by production. Uh, it tells you how many shields, how many missile bases you have, and what your shipyards are producing. So at a glance, you can just have a look to see where the, the, the broad output of your military uh, your, your military efforts are. So you can see if there's any out-of-date ships being created or you know, you've know you decided that you want to change something. You can see where there might be a, a problem with regards to a potential weakness. Um, coupled with this, we also have in the system screen the Exterminate tab. Now the Exterminate tab, uh, it will green light colonies where uh, you have set there to be a certain amount of missile bases but you've not yet fully uh, upgraded them so or fully built them I should say so let's go to Altair where we saw a flashing green a flashing green uh, crosshair and it's the reason why it's flashing green is because we've set our bases to three and we've only got two so um, it's kind of warning us it's like okay remember you wanted three sp uh, three missile bases there well you've only got two um, we also have system alerts for enemy colonies and we will also get red flashing cursors, which I think integrates when there's a ship incoming. So when there's a fleet incoming to one of your systems, it will let you know. Um, this is a really useful screen. So we can add this to the races screen and the status screen, particularly in the races, just to as something that you want to look at at the start of the game when you when you picked it back up and you've not been playing for a little while. Because one of the things that one of the issues that can happen with 4x games is we're all busy. Most of us have to work or, you know, study or we've got family commitments or whatever it is. We can't all be full-time video game players. And it's often that you, you get so tied up with one of these games and you get so into it and so focused, but you might have to take a week or two weeks or three weeks away from the game and then it can be more difficult to kind of get back in. So the more tools you have at your disposal um, in order to be, be able to jump back in and sort of and see where you were uh, and not not have to kind of and we don't all record our videos i mean i <laughs> i have the uh the, because i do youtube i have the benefit of being able to to play the last few minutes of the last episode so i can actually see where it was that i i was uh, i was in the game but this also uh, remnants of the precursors also has notes now i don't know if you've seen this but you can actually type in notes hello oh hang on a minute there we go Hello, I'm a note with three L's. There we go. So, you know, we can we can put stuff in here. So we can remind ourselves that if we had some sort of elaborate battle plans or we go to the uh, the system screens, we can we can put notes into these systems. So, for example, I could I could put a note into this system here and say, you know, I want to I want to explore here. Something like this, you know, so you, you can it's really, really handy. You, you, there's all sorts of stuff in Remnants of the Precursors that makes game, playing this game really, really fun and and easy. I mean, as you I, hopefully I've been able to show off some of the some of the complexity in the game, because it, on the surface of it, it's kind of a it's, it's a simple looking game on the surface. But there's so much nuance and there's so much going on under the under the you know under that surface of the game there's loads to it everything about this game has got complexity and um complexity yet being simple and streamlined to play that that's one of the hallmarks of a good game in my opinion complexity doesn't necessarily make a good game but if a game is complex and it's also streamlined and fun then that appeals to a certain kind of gamer without a doubt i mean look at chess chess is pretty simple but man is that game complex in you know in, in its execution. Anyway, before, let's start playing. So, where were we? We were invading. That was right. We've got a. F oh, excuse me. I just did something I did not want to do. Just uh, scroll in here. Oh, oh I see. They're deployed. Oh. It's saying bleep. 
I'm not sure what's happening there. Have I found a bug? There we go. I'm not sure quite what happened there. I think I deployed a fleet and yeah, um, that's that might be a bug to report. But, or it might just be something I'm doing wrong, either way. Ray, help! Okay, so, Amelia, we were bombing. Uh, so every turn we were we were bombing this to try to reduce this population on this Bulrathi world down to something that's a little bit more manageable for us. Um, 26 Bulrathi population will probably chew through about 70 plus of ours. And I don't want to waste 70 colonists to, to, uh, on a on a small small Bulrathi world like this with a poor with poor minerals because poor minerals take a long time uh, to, to build the industry back up so it's just not worth it. Um, we were building hyperexes on all these planets so I'm going to continue with that strategy. So we're still we're still building these hyperexes. Let's bombard this planet, take the population down. I think now we, we, were, we are at the point where we can start sending some transports out. So let's start this is a i'll show you a useful tactic for coordinating your attack it doesn't really matter a huge amount however i like to try to coordinate it so that my 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 uh, military transports will all arrive at the same kind of time so let's say that we were sending from sato first we check our transports and you know we can see that the travel time is to amelia is eight years now that's quite a long time um so i don't want to send anything from there from joe the transport time is three years. If you remember, the transports travel at one um, one engine tech less than your military ships. So that was three years. What are we looking at here? This one's five, and Yoshida, I think, will probably be five too, maybe four. Uh, oh, oh, it's got to be on. Hang on a minute. That's a rally point. My bad. Send transports. There we are. So it's four years. So let's send one from Adachi, and we'll send ten, ten fleet, uh, ten colonists, or marines, whatever you want to call them. The uh, the colonists just conveniently change their hats and uh, become become troopers. They do, they don their stormtrooper outfits and uh, switch roles because they are ubiquitous in in their in their jobs in this game so next turn we're going to send them from Yoshida and then the following turn we're going to send some from Joe by that time we should have bombarded the planet so there's only a few Bulrathi population we don't really want to completely destroy it because otherwise we'll have to build a colony ship and that's just effort I don't like making extra effort uh, extra effort sucks we have two fusion bombers here oops I didn't mean to do that undeploy fleet there we go uh, I just want to check this fleet out here you see, the problem that I'm doing is I'm clicking on the fleet. You don't need to do that. This is a bad habit that I've got into. So don't be like Ben. Um, if you want to check out what a fleet has got over it, you can just hover the mouse over, um, and you don't need to. You don't need to click on it. And that will avoid that problem that I had earlier. So we've got two fusion bombers, one Hyper V1, which is not that great, and uh, some Fighter Twos, which turned out to be pretty damn effective. Or they will turn out to be pretty damn effective because the initial fighters that we had, even those guys, they did really well against those large ships. But the Bulrathi were fielding. So, um, okay, let's roll the turn on. This turn, we only got 18 pop. Okay, so we bombed them down to five. Um, oh, and we've inf our spies have infiltrated a Bulrathi base. I'm not sure if we've seen this yet in this game. <laughs> look at that <laughs> look at the Alkari guy. I love the art in this game. The art is just absolutely amazing. Like seriously, props to the artist. It's just so good. Um now I can't remember what we wanted. Um I wonder if we can look now. No, we can't. We need to it doesn't allow you to do that. So did we want force fields? I think the Bulrathi would probably Ah, oh, planetology, I think they had um they had something that we wanted. Uh, I think it was eco improved ecology. There we go, improved terraforming. That was the one. So this allows us to increase the population capacities of our planets by 20 million. And you have to pay uh, credits to do this. So um, this is excellent. Now, the first thing we want to do is immediately start terraforming. And look, as soon as you've done this, it, uh, it, it allows you to increase your population and then it shows you, so for example, for example, we've got 110 pops here and we've maxed out on factories. However, now uh, we, what we need to do is if we grow our population up to, uh, up to 120, so we'll do that in two turns and we'll keep some tech going. 
uh, we'll grow we'll grow some population and then we'll in fact i won't do that i'll put it into immediately into industry and then uh, we'll, we'll get our maximum number of factories up this is a significant boost to your economy i mean significant it doesn't seem like it's a lot at first but trust me um when all of your when all of your planets are are suddenly producing an you know an extra what i'm not sure whatever percentage it will be but you know it's a certain it's 20 colonists essentially on top of uh, 100 so it's just really really useful it's really useful um won't do it on all of them at the same time i think i'd like to continue building some missile bases here so let's just keep this ecology yeah we'll just start teleforming a little bit here and this this planet can start building some pops as well now Yoshida this turn needs to send some transports too I'm gonna to send I'm gonna send 10 from Yoshida next turn we're gonna send 10 from Joe and that should be able, I'm hoping they'll be able to deal with those five bull uh, it, we might actually see <laughs> just how how strong the bull are I mean five of them might fight off 30 it's possible I mean, it's, it's possible. And when I say possible, I mean likely. Okay, what is this? Oh, this is an Alkari, an AVRI fleet. So they've... Oops. That's me clicking on them again. So we've got Sparrowhawks, Skyhawks, Falcons, and Foxbats. Hmm. They're just using us as a staging base by the looks of it. It looks like the Bullrathi are... They are starting to reinforce their ships. I don't think they, there's really a lot they can do. Uh, especially now we've started mil building missile bases. I think... The Bulrathi, we're gonna we're gonna defeat them now. There's not gonna be there's there's no doubt about that. The issue is how this affects us in the rest of the game. The good thing is that we are in the position now to take the Bulrathi's planets, and once we've taken all these planets, and some of them are good luck. I don't know what's here, but Midgard will be uh, it will be a Terran planet, most likely. I think that's how they start, and um, this one is a is a step planet. That's not too bad. This one's an ocean planet. It is quite large, but it's it's got poor minerals so not the best planet but it will do if nothing else we can use it use it to send population or to grow population okay um i wonder if we could send these ships out now 103 fighters is a lot and we've got these hyper x's incoming yeah maybe we maybe we'll wait okay so we're sending those from yoshida no we don't want to bomb the bombard the planet now notice how they did grow the uh the the Bullrathi did grow one one pop. So I'm going to send some from Joe now. And I'm actually going to send 20 from here. Oops. That was the uh, the wrong button. And we'll send... We're going to send 20 pops. I, I'm doing that just because of my fear of the bull, of, of how, just how strong the Bullrathi are in ground combat. They are most menacing. Um, now Adachi, let's just start... We've got that missile base up, so let's start building our um, uh, terraforming again and building our populations up. These guys are going to go, it's going to be maxed out, so you, you'll know that it's maxing out because it will say reserve, which means that the extra spending is going into your reserve. So let's just get these uh, our industry up. It's always worth doing that. It, the quicker you get to your maximum amount of indus, uh, industrial output, the, the, the quicker, the the more effective you will be in the long term, let's say. You don't really want to be spreading, unless you really need a tech urgently, um, it's better to tr to max out your factories first because their increased output will then go into spending uh, research spending. So let's just reduce this down to, to two. By the way, you don't have to play this game with so much micromanagement as I do. It's really not necessary. Like if, if you watch, like uh, my, my colleague Rob, Explorminate, when he plays, and um, he he plays he can play a little bit quicker than me and he's really really good at the game and he will he doesn't always micromanage everything and he's still very effective with the way, with the way he plays so it's really not that necessary i think i think if you're playing on the on the highest difficulty settings then it, it becomes more important to be to be really careful about your about maxing out your factories and your populations and then doing your research that kind of thing but this game is 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 complex and it's situational the things that you need to do in it are situational to the game that you're playing so you may find that in some circumstances you just have to you just have to fight early on that's you've got no choice and you're just going to have to and even though that it is going to stunt your your economy for the you know 
and put you behind for the rest of the game. You just have to fight. That's just the way that that game is going to play out. And that's good. That that is that's the mark of a good game, in my opinion. It's a mark of a good game that you don't always have to have this same kind of min maxi um, predetermined, predestined trajectory through the through the tech tree or through the through the things that you have to do. It just it this game. There's more to it than that. I think I might. No, let's leave them at Amelia. I think I'm going to wait until these guys. This fleet here is is much more is much bigger, and then we're going to start sending them over to Traken. Uh, we don't want to bombard that planet. You can't just uh, one of the things you can't do in in this game is you can't just select a few of your bombers just to selectively bomb you. You either bomb with all of your fleet or none of it. Okay, um, Alto has reached its maximum number of colonists. That's good. So let's just drop that down. And we go back into... Oh, we do... Let's just drop a few down here. Yeah, and we go back into tech spending. Uh, where are we here? Let's just drop the eco spending down. And, oops, that was way too many. Sato has reached its industry maximum. It's really nice to be back playing this. I, I, I've, uh, I didn't play yesterday because I was recording a series for, uh, for another game that I have completely fallen in love with, uh, called Shadow Empire, which you should go check out. By the way, if you've not seen, if you've not seen those videos on Explominate, go and check them out because that game is also really good. It's very, very different to this, but it's, but it's really good. However, um, it's no. Even though I'm, I'm absolutely in love with that game at the moment, I really, really love it. It is no chore at all to come back to play Remnants of the Precursors. It's just so much fun. This game is just, it, it is still, it has rapidly become one of my favourite games and it will be one of my favourite games for a long time to come. Unless, unless some, some of the major, you know, bigger 4X games, I say bigger, you know, the more sort of prominent, recent, better funded 4X games, unless they start taking more cues out of this the playbook of this original, you know, of the original Master of Orion and, and and some of the innovations that Ray's put into and Ray and crew, sorry, have put into into Remnants of the Precursors. I uh, I think this is gonna stay is gonna stay my favourite Space 4X for a long time. It's just it's just such a beautiful game. Okay, we've got loads of ships now. Um it might be worth waiting one more turn just so we've got an absolutely monstrous fleet and then um, we're gonna send them to Traken. They don't seem like they've got much in the way of um of anything that can really hurt me. Okay, so we've got 10, 20, 40 ships inbound. And, oh, the AVRI look like they're bombarding the planet. Oh, they're absolute idiots. <laughs> I bet you they bombard the uh, bombard this planet before my, my colonists can arrive and I'll lose all these guys. That's really annoying. And there's nothing I can do about that. And the only thing that I could do would be to break our alliance. And I mean, look, we don't want to do that. Our relations meter currently is in is in unity, so they're, they're really happy with us. They're calling us venerated ally, um, which is a good thing to be called in this game. Okay, what do we want here? Why am I coming into the screen? Okay, let's see if they'll exchange technology. Nope. We can get a better trade treaty, but we've not long uh, agreed a different one. So you don't want to you don't want to be keeping keep agreeing new trade treaties all the time because you'll never ever break even on the trade so okay let's just come out of that screen i don't know if that music might have been a little bit loud for the recording as well <clears throat> i'll have to find out when i uh, watch it back later so where are we okay let's just try again nope no bombardment and we can steal computers from the uh, bulrathi base ECM Jammer Mark 1. I am happy with that because that saves me having to spend the time doing it. Endo meets maximum number of factories. Okay, let's just drop this one down. And I wasn't really paying attention and I think I missed one too. So let's just... There we go. So... Um, oh, there we are. What I might do... Here, I'm going to show you a trick. Sometimes you might want to immediately pump some spending pump some billion credits into uh into one of these into one of these planets that you've just uh, started colonizing or you know 
there might be many reasons why you might might want extra production, right? And we are slowly trickling funds every turn. Four percent of our of our overall out, um, output is going into the treasury funds, but that's not fast enough for me. So what you can do is you can just put everything into one of these sliders that you've already maxed out, so something like ecology, and that money will go into your reserve. That's why it says reserve there. So if we were to, let's just say, put all our spending just from a few from three planets in one turn now it's expensive to do this you do lose uh, i think it's i think you lose a half of your of what you put in so actually it's not the most effective way to to save money however it does put a big lump sum of money into that that bank so to speak so i'm going to do that just for one turn and we're going to we're going to crash fund it uh so okay we've we've, we've Infiltrated the Borathi base again. So these spies are really doing a good job now. Uh, do we take propulsion tech or planetology? Um, they're going to have probably one of these planet colonizing um, uh, technologies. I think I'm going to go for, for, for propulsion. Yeah, they just gave us hydrogen fuel cells. We don't. We, that's no good to us, really. Although. There, there are situations where you might want to put a smaller engine onto your uh, onto your ship. So, a hyd um, or does hydrogen fuel cell? No, forgive me, I'm talking rubbish. Um, this is this is the engine type, not the not the fuel cells. The fuel cells, um, we we've already got a better fuel cell. Um, we we already have. Where are we? Propulsion. So we already have iridium fuel cells. So and um, we that that gives us light. Uh, reserves to go up to six light years so anything under this is kind of yeah you don't need that now so well well there, there we go so we got one turn of spending ah look that's what happened the Bulrati colony Amelia has been destroyed our pe transports attempting to land there have perished the AVRI are well I'm trying not to swear on this stream so <laughs> yeah I don't like the AVRI anymore they're they're bad they're bad people they're bad birdies. Okay, we've got now a lot of ships, so we're gonna send we're gonna send these ships down to uh, do, down to Traken. We'll send both fleets down to Traken. There we go. I'm just I'm uh, I'm having some momentary confusion with the controls because I've been playing a game that has a different control system. Okay, so we need to build uh, in this in these uh, planets now. Let's get back into tech spending now that we've put some money in. Let's just have a look. That look, we 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 managed to ditch four hundred credits into the into the treasury. It's like I say, you don't want to do it too much. It's really inefficient, but it can be it, it can be helpful sometimes just to have a uh, to have some some of that money in the bank. Okay. Uh, what are we building on Joe? We're we building the same thing. We don't want to be building the same thing here. Well, we've got 10 missile bases because this is our frontier planet. Um, it might be wise to just put everything into tech for a little while now. So um, we can start breaking through into these new these new technologies. Battle Computer Mark III is going to be really useful because that will, that, that will raise our maximum computer level. Um, also, we've got Class III Deflector Shields, which is going to be great for our ships. And Scatterpack V is on its way, which will enable our missile bases to be a lot better. Here we go. Let's wait a few more turns. It's a shame we lost all that population, but, you know, that's just the way it works in this game, unfortunately. Sometimes you will, uh, you know, something like that will happen. Having an ally um, is a double-edged sword, really. I, I remember the, the first game that I re really remember allies being really annoying, I think, was... Probably maybe maybe Alpha Centauri uh, or um, also Stars in Shadow. So there's another four a Space Four X game, a very good one by the way, called um, Stars in Shadow. It's probably the it's one of the better Master of Orion two inspired games, and I, I noticed that that's got a real problem when you when you ally with one of the races, they will quite happily just sneak their ship their colony ships into your into your territory and steal them out from under your nose, and you're just like oh oh you <laughs> why are you on a Right, let's carry on. We've captured a spy from the Human Triumvirate. So everybody's trying to spy on us now. Um, let's just go to let's look at our intelligence tab. Yeah, we want to we want to put a little bit more spending in if they if they are trying to 
to catch us. By the way, every few turns, if you suspect that you've got a lot of enemy spies in your in your system, you can just bump the spending up just for one turn, and that will increase your chances drastically of catching anybody who's in your systems. Um, you don't want to spend too much money on security tax um, unless you're at war and you're getting a lot of problems with spies blowing your missile bases up. That can be really irritating. Um, so let's see what the humans are saying. I may, they might be able to swap something with them. Uh, oh, they've got loads of stuff that we could take. Most of them, however, are not that... Oh, magic Gatling lasers. I think we can research that ourselves. Personal deflector shield would be really useful. They want fusion bomb for it, though. I don't think I want to trade that. What else have they got? Sublight drives is good, but I think we that's something we can easily get ourselves. I don't really want to give them f uh, fusion bombs. Um, class 3 deflectors we're already getting soon. Reduced industrial waste is also really good. That means you're paying less on each factory because... Well, you're paying less in ecology because you're... Your each factory creates waste, if you remember, and you have to you have to spend money in your ecology slider to clean it up every turn. Uh, redu reducing the industrial waste is a really really important thing. I'm just going to leave it for now. I just want to see actually whether we've got one of those coming. Can we get reduced industrial waste? I think it actually might be in construction. No, that's in just improved industrial tech. I think it is in planetology actually. That might be worth getting. That might be worth getting with those guys. Um, and that might be worth swapping for um, fusion bomb. It will greatly increase the amount of money, uh, amount of money that we're making every turn. Um, I'll give them fusion bombs. I'm not bothered about that. Um, giving your, you know, giving a potential enemy t uh, technology they can use against you isn't the best idea. However. I'm really not convinced that they're going to get anywhere near my my uh, my systems because of these amazing fighters we've got. Like seriously, these are, these these ships that we've got are really really good. Now these these original Hyper V ones, I'm tempted to scrap now. Um, now that we've got these Hyper X twos, the Hyper X twos are going to be significantly more powerful. Ah, uh, this first fleet's going to arrive first, so. This this fleet, unless they've changed their designs, isn't gonna isn't gonna stand up isn't gonna stand up to me. I don't think. They've only got fifty three population. I think we need to build a colony ship as well. By the way, that's something I've forgotten to do. Um, we should probably build a colony ship on one of these factory planets. Which one's closest? I mean, Joe's the closest. So let's let's build a colony ship very fast. Um, it's uh, ocean poor, but let's get that before anyone else does, because the AVRI or the humans will, or, the, or even the Bulrathi will, will get that if we if we don't get it quickly. So, yeah, it's just a normal colony ship. It's going to take three years. That's fine, no problemo. And here's a ship combat. So, what have we got? Let's move the uh, fusion bombers in first. Oops. If you right click anywhere by the way it will return to the uh, to the ship that you're on. That's a nice little feature that's in there. So see how these can move for now the HyperX 2s because we've got more we've got better engines and we've got the inertial stabilizers too. So let's move these HyperX's in. And the fighters to see what they've got on these. Uh, they've got eight uh, wow, they've got loads of lasers these war bears and they've got fusion bombs too. And the brute has four heavy lasers. These, uh, and obviously there's a. They've got HyperX missiles on uh, HyperX rockets on their planet, so I don't think they can really do much to us. I'm gonna let's move these HyperXs in. Yeah, shield class two. Let's fire these rockets off. Just move them there, and we'll move the fighters in. Yeah, they're not even touching these hyper -Xs. I mean, these medium ships. Um, yeah, we didn't even take any hits from these either. Well, our missile and beam defense is just so is just so impressive on these ships. They're so much more impressive than anything else. 
And let's uh, use our fighters on these brutes. They're probably not going to do much damage, but then I, I absolutely guarantee you they're not going to do much damage back either. Did they take any hits from those missiles? Yeah, they did. Okay, so they did, they did do some damage. Uh, the fusion bomber can stand off and shoot. I'm not sure how much damage that did. Not a lot, I don't think. But they're not even hitting me with these Hyper X. These Hyper X just aren't, aren't getting through my defenses, which makes me happy. Yeah, we're, we're gradually whittling them down. Let's just uh, we'll move, move them here. Yeah, we started taking damage on the fusion bombers now, but it's too late. Uh, we've now reached their planet and we're going to bomb them. There we go. Missile base is done. Um, let's just make keep them there. Fire more missiles off. And we'll keep hitting this brute with the fighters. Just chipping away at their armor. We're near. We're quite close to losing a fusion bomber, so I'd like to move these guys back. Try and get them out of the way. Um, yeah, we destroyed that ship there. Let's launch more missiles, and we'll put these fighters in the way. Try take down these war bears. Now there's eight of them, so there's a significant amount of them. I might retreat these fusion bombers now. Their job is done. Ah, oh, we lost one. Yeah, I'm going to retreat. Oh, mind you, I want them to bomb the planet. Let's just see if I can keep them away from the uh, from the enemy. Now, the Hyper X X2s, are, their, their mission is complete. But they will act as an effective screen because I'm fairly sure these war bears will not be able to kill them. Okay. Let's move these fusion bombers back. Try and keep them out of the way. Or the, it out of the way. There's only one left. And the Hyperx is also... Uh, they, they can't fight now. Oh, they are gradually taking these fighters down. Now, these war bears are well equipped to, to, to attack my fighters. They, uh, they've got uh, 15, 22, 29 lasers on them, which is a lot. Um, but they, but they're, really, they're going to be struggling to hit beam defense 7. Uh, they've only got... They've only got uh, attack level three. Attack level three is not bad, but um, I, I don't think I've got my the manual up at the moment, so I can't look. But yeah, then they're not really gonna they're they're gonna struggle to defeat us. I think here I might just auto play this one. Oh, we're losing a lot of fighters. Look, we might not win this. Let's just pause this. I think he's attacking my fusion bomber. Yeah, let's move that. Let's move that fusion bomber out of the way. Um, I don't want to lose this ship. Oh, I've lost it. Oops. Oh dear. Okay, let's just also play this. I need to win this battle. Oh wow! Look at this. It's going to be close, guys. It's going to be really close. I don't know if we're going to do it, though. They've got 41 hit points on two left. I think we might be best off. I don't know. Let's just see how far we can get. It's just the, those war bears have just got so many guns. So many guns. Let's auto play it. Yeah, they. I don't think they can... Neither of us are going to be able to do much damage to the other now. <laughs> It's so tense and close. I think we might have the advantage. Yeah, we've got it. Look at that. So there was me uh, bragging about these amazing fighters that I'd created. And look, it was so close. The, the reason why these aren't doing so well is because they've just got really, really poor quality guns. So those lasers they're using are just the, they're the weakest thing that you can get in this game. Um, and those ships, you see, the AI isn't that bad in this game. It, um, they've created a ship that's designed to fight my fighters, but they, 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 those small ships, and I mean, how many did we have? It was just over a hundred. They tore through eight large ships, and those eight large ships were much more expensive to build than my fighters. I guarantee it. Uh, so yes, let's 
let's bombard this planet. And we've got class 3 deflectors, reduced industrial waste. Uh, we're going to start researching class 4 def deflectors. Uh, the Evri are happy that we've that we've been bombing the uh, Bulrathi. Okay, um, we're over time, guys, so I'm going to end the episode there. I think I'm going to record another one because I'm enjoying this so much, so uh, let's try and get a couple of episodes out today. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll see you guys later. Take care.